Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to our video on Chapter 15, Section 6 on Applications of Equilibrium Constants. Now, we've been talking about the equilibrium constant K. K indicates the extent to which a reaction proceeds in a given direction, forward or in the reverse direction. Now, the equilibrium constant also allows us to predict the direction in which a reaction mixture achieves equilibrium and how to calculate the equilibrium concentrations of the reactants and products. And we've done that already before. So let's get some practice in predicting the direction of a reaction. We're going to approach it a little differently now, though. So let's say we talk about the Haber process. We said in class, the Haber process is manufacturing um, ammonia. We have nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas reacting to ammonia. The equilibrium <coughs> constant for this is 0 0.105 at 472 degrees Celsius at the equilibrium constants are temperature specific. So an example problem. If I have two moles of H2, one mole of N2, and two moles of NH3 in a one liter container, we can get the molarity concentration of gas with moles and volume. How will the reaction mixture react to reach equilibrium? First question. Will more N2 and H2 react to form more NH3? Or will more NH3 decompose to N2 and H2? So basically, in which direction will the reaction go? In the forward direction or the reverse direction to reach equilibrium? To answer this question, we have to look towards our equilibrium constant expression. We substitute those given values on the last board into our expression. However, those values given were initial concentrations. They were not concentrations at equilibrium. If you think about your ice charts, they were not at the equilibrium portion. They're actually at the initial state or stage. So, we substitute our initial concentrations into that equilibrium constant expression, and then we compare that, what we get, to the given equilibrium constant from the problem. The given one was 0 0.105, and now we're going to plug in our concentrations here to see what we get. So when we plug in those concentrations, we get 0 0.55, sorry, 0 0.500 for our new number. We don't know what it is yet. If we compare this to our equilibrium constant, we see that this one is much higher. So to reach equilibrium, we have to go from 0.5 to 0.105. That's what this next statement says. For this reaction to reach equilibrium, we have to decrease from our starting value of 0.5 to 0.105. Now what this means is this. In order to achieve a drop from 0.5 to 0.105, we have to decrease our numerator, which is the concentration of NH3. And subsequently, if we decrease NH3, then the concentrations of N2 and H2 are going to increase. So we decrease NH3, meaning more of it decomposes, forming more N2 and H2. Thus, we say that the reaction proceeds towards equilibrium by forming N2 and H2 from NH3, or basically, the reaction goes to equilibrium from right to left. So in the reverse direction of our initial bounce chemical equation. The value of 0 0.500 is called your reaction quotient. It's given by the symbol Q. If you're dealing with pressures, it's Q sub P. If you deal with concentrations as we are now, it's Q sub C. So this is your Q sub C, your reaction quotient. By definition, it's a number obtained by substituting reactants and product concentrations or pressures at any point during a reaction into the equilibrium constant expression. So at any point during the reaction, we took our initial um, concentrations. We could have taken concentrations at the midway point of the reaction. 
it gotten you know a sim the same result of reaction proceeding from right to left. Now let's take our generic uh, balanced chemical equation as we have in the past. A goes A plus B goes to C plus D and they're in equilibrium. If we're going to write an expression for our reaction quotient, it looks very similar to our um, equilibrium constant expression that we've had in the past that we just substituted into. So it looks like KEQ, but these concentrations that you substitute in, or the pressures you substitute in, are not necessarily going to be at equilibrium. Usually they're not. We'll talk about when they actually are, but usually they're not. The reaction quotient, KQ sub C, will, will change, but K sub C will always remain the same. Remember that. Q sub C can change depending on if you talk about initial concentrations or concentrations after 5 minutes, concentrations after 10 minutes. Um, but your K sub C will always reflect your concentrations at equilibrium. And that doesn't change because we know our concentrations remain constant. So K sub C is legitimately a constant at a certain temperature. So why is Q useful? Well, it helps determine if our reaction is really at equilibrium or if we're going to have to form more products to get to equilibrium or form more reactants to get to equilibrium. It's useful for slow reactions because you can monitor it a little better. And it's good in comparing um, our reaction quotient to our equilibrium constant for uh, concentration and the same for pressures. So here's a takeaway from this lesson. If Q is equal to K, that means our system is at equilibrium. So if I had plugged in those numbers from the previous problem and I got 0 0.105 for my reaction quotient and my K sub C value was 0 0.105, that means the, the reaction was already at equilibrium when I measured those concentrations. If Q is greater than K, that means the concentration of my products is larger than the concentration of my reactants. My products react to form reactants. So we have the reverse reaction taking place. Our reaction proceeds from right to left to reach equilibrium. And if Q is less than K, it's the opposite. My products are smaller in their concentrations than my reactants. So the reactants will react together, forming more products. Thus, my reaction will move from left to right to reach equilibrium. If you want to take notes on this, come to class prepared. Adios.